Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon open topped office tank and today we're just going to do a simple before and after water change. I may get in there and remove a few of these red wag platies that are growing like crazy in here. Um, I'm not sure about that yet. We'll get to that when we get to that. The main thing I want to point out in this tank is my now fallen over temple plant. Uh, a little while ago, my regular viewers will remember that I trimmed this thing back mightily. Uh, all these branches up the top I cut back, and when I did so, I explained that you generally have to adjust the amount of roots that a plant has when you adjust the amount of branches that a plant has uh, that dramatically. And I didn't address the root system at all. I just cut the plant back and let it go. And now you can kind of see through the glare that the root system is looking pretty rough. Uh, this sort of brownish looking dead piece back here is just that. It's one of the main chunks of root and that's died off completely. There's cyanobacteria starting to grow on it. So today is the day we're just going to go ahead and pull that out of there. I can uh, save it. I can throw it in my grow out bucket in the basement. You can actually see these pieces right here in the filter already have roots and those are little pieces that I've already got cuttings from. So pulling it out of here does not mean I'm not going to have temple plant anymore. We're just not going to have it in this tank anymore. And I'm also doing the experiment with the pothos plant. I say it's an experiment, but I already know what the outcome is going to be. Um, I'm just kind of trying to prove the point that simply putting a pothos plant in your aquarium does not magic away your nitrates, as a lot of people seem to suggest it will. And by having that pothos plant in there over time, we're going to see how it doesn't magic away my nitrates. I'm not expecting it to. So we will be checking the nitrates before and after. And of course, we will be getting a good look at it before and after. So we're going to call this part your before. And there's your after. So the first thing we're going to look at is the nitrate because I just took a dip test and you have to read those pretty much as they're done or the color will continue to change and you don't get a valid test. So it's not going to tell us a whole lot. And for you, the viewer, you're probably not going to be able to tell anything at all. But holding it this way, the one on the left is the before and the one on the right is the after. So we got a pretty significant reduction in nitrate. I know, again, it's hard to tell by looking at it this way, but I know what I'm looking at. And we got a significant enough reduction in nitrate that I'm happy, but we're still probably in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 parts per million. It's not low nitrates in this tank by any means. We did a five gallon water change, or I should say I pulled five gallons out, and then I probably put about six back in since there was some losses due to evaporation. I did remove the uh, big temple plant right there. I was just thinking about that dip strip again for a moment. I wanted to point out the fact that if you noticed when you looked at it, uh, not only was it hard to tell the difference between the nitrate colors, all of the other colors matched up almost identically because my water chemistry doesn't really shift during water changes. I'm just reducing the nitrate and the dissolved solids in there. I'm not really shifting the hardness or... Uh, I, you know, the nitrite is non-existent. Uh, really, the only things on that thing are the pH, uh, the general hardness, and the carbonate hardness. And none of that stuff really shifts when I do a big water change. Even if I do a big water change, I don't really shift any of that stuff. All I really do is reduce the nitrate and some of the dissolved solids. So we pulled that temple plant out of there. I'm a little concerned about the fact that we've got so many dead roots. I tried to gently work it out of the sand and get as much of the root mass out as I could and I got a lot of it but there's no way I got all of it. There's definitely going to be uh, some roots and stuff. I mean you can see some roots and stuff that are still sitting in there that didn't come out and how much you know they're going to add to the bio load as they begin to decompose and break down. I don't know. We'll see. But you can tell that pothos plant I put in there is doing really well. This piece right here was just a little piece sticking out and this piece that is now all the way over to the corner of the tank was also just a little piece sticking out when I put it in the tank and you can also see the roots coming out. Well if you can get through all the glare on my fingers but you can see all the roots coming out of the planter and so that's doing really well and I've got about three inches of sand and gravel 
Um, I'm not really getting anything that's resembling denitrification in this tank so far. I just really don't know uh, what the issue is between the depth of the sand bed, the fineness of the sand. You know, that sand is really, really fine play sand, and therefore it creates a pretty compact and dense substrate, uh, limiting the amount of water flow that can move through it. And, of course, with all those rocks piled up and I've got this big cave over here, it really should be an environment uh, conducive to denitrification. And yet, this is one of my tanks where I've tried to get it to denitrify and it just won't seem to do it. So, I don't know. I'm still a little baffled by that. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. I have got tanks in the basement that I've been experimenting with. I've got some tanks that always seem to have low nitrates. I have others that nothing I do ever seems to reduce the nitrate. And I just try to get to the bottom of what's going on uh, with some of those and whether I can really establish an actual denitrification process. So anyway, uh, back to this tank. The last thing I did other than the water change itself was to pull some of that Java Windelov out of there. You can see that that's that uh, real fingery sort of Java fern. I do have a lot of that available for sale now. Uh, there's a link down below if you're interested. you got to scroll down through all my other uh, Amazon links and so on and so forth. But eventually you'll get down to where it says aquatic plants for sale and you will see my email next to it. You can contact me and we'll talk about what you want and so on and so forth. Uh, I definitely have some aquatic plants for sale at the moment. And a lot of it is going to be this Java Wendelov. You can see it's growing on that plastic cave in there. That's one of the few pieces of fake uh, decor that I have in any of my tanks. That's one of my original pieces from way back in the day. And I like it. It's still sitting in there. It's still serving its purpose. And it looks lovely. You can't even tell that it's plastic. So that Java, I never planted it on that. But it got on it. It attached to it. It's grown all over it. And in fact, it was growing out the doors and windows. And that's what I pulled. I removed all the stuff that was growing out here. It was literally rooted in on the inside and growing out. And so I opened that back up now, giving the fish a little more habitat. Plus, it makes it a little nicer for us to look in there. So a lot more light in the tank now that we got that uh, tree out of the middle of it. Got a big pile of rocks in the middle that was sort of supporting that tree. I don't really know if I need all those rocks anymore, but we're not going to worry about that tonight. We'll get to that some other time. Uh, I do actually have a box of rocks in the basement, and I can just pull these out of here and just toss them in my box and save them for another day. So, as I said, make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss anything I got coming up. You never know what it's going to be with me. Uh, check out those links down below if you're interested. I do now have uh, an Amazon storefront. I've not really officially launched that yet. I've not shot a video talking about that, but it is there. It is available if you want to go check that out. Uh, I do have a limited amount of merchandise available, and I do have memberships available. So, check out all that stuff, and don't forget to also check out my other channel if you're interested dan's outdoors and more there's a link for that down below too so thanks again for watching thanks for listening to me ramble and i will see you real soon on the next one